Hello, I'm Eric Pilgrim with the Fort Knox Public Affairs Office. Permanent change of station or PCS season usually occurs during the summer months when children have finished school, freeing military parents up to pack up their household goods and move to a new location. With the arrival of PCS orders comes all the stress involved in finding movers, clearing housing, and planning for a new job in a new location, sometimes halfway around the world. Help with making every move beneficial to soldiers and their families, officials at housing and transportation offices work hard to get the right paperwork in the right hands at the right time. But there is a lot that soldiers must be aware of and must do to ensure a smooth transition. I am joined today by Eric Hamilton, the Deputy Director of the Fort Knox Housing Office, and Marie Torres, Traffic Management Specialist at the Logistics Readiness Center to discuss some of the issues that face soldiers and families and what they can do to overcome them. Welcome, Marie and Eric. We'll start today uh, by addressing the, uh, the transportation issues. I think that the soldiers and their families are probably most concerned with. Um, Marie, if you could kind of give us a, an idea of some of the, the, the issues that soldiers face every year and in and, and ways that they can overcome them. Well, first of all, thanks for having me um, here to discuss some of these issues. So some of the issues are um, once the soldiers really receive their orders, they need to come to the transportation office. I know they like to plan with their, their spouses on dates and at courts planning and stuff like that, but if they come up to the office and at least put some dates in there, and we can tweak those dates as they come in, the more, longer you wait, we could end up seeing blackout dates which then it prevents the soldiers to, um, getting those dates that they want, um, as well as being a successful mover and not delaying that service member and their family members moving on to their next duty station. Referring to housing, I know there, there have been some issues in the past regarding uh, housing and PCS moves. Um, soldiers maybe not knowing what to do with, with excess household goods and, and things like that. Can you address that issue and talk about that? Or? Yes, sir, and um, thank you for the invite this morning. Um, we have a great housing team who they love what they do and they care what they do. And oftentimes we see the, the soldier when they're in a bit of a duress, which is maybe too late uh, where pre-planning wasn't thought out. Uh, for instance, one of our key subjects that we really instill is uh, lodging and transportation because it does affect us. Um, the lodging, we have a lot of renovation going on on Fort Knox right now, which is great, but it also delays in some of our move-ins, uh, as well as cadet summer training. So with lodging and cadet summer training, uh, making your reservations early is extremely key. And we have soldiers that show up, they may be doing a ditty move where the house isn't completely ready, lodging wasn't reserved, and they have a U-Haul truck full of furniture and nowhere to go. Um, we do a great job communicating with our partner to assist, but we, we really prefer the, the soldier to see us once they know they're leaving because it, there's, there's a lot of things that, that are pre-planning that would make your move easier, even going to your next duty station. Where can uh, soldiers go online? Uh, for instance, like if, if they wanted to come in and they wanted to maybe live off post as opposed to on post. Um, uh, th there is a website, right, that you can direct them to? That yes, sir, we have a great tool that we control um, internally. So you have ZillowRealtor.com. Well, the Army DOD wide has a program called Homes.mil. It's simple, Homes.mil. Uh, you enter that on your search and then it defaults you to a search bar and you just put the installation that you're, you're going to. Once you do that, it'll list all the houses in that area. Now what's unique about this is our staff inspects, takes pictures, and we personally put our hands on these homes to ensure uh, life, health, safety, they're quality homes and they're afford uh, affordable homes for our soldiers. Marie, what, uh, what can you uh, share with, with the community regarding maybe some, some do's and don'ts for soldiers uh, that are preparing to leave and, and, uh, and you know some things that you've seen from your offices, things that they, they probably shouldn't have done or things they, that, they, that they did wrong and just share those with. So the biggest thing I would say is plan. 
So the farther out that you can plan um, and get those orders. So if, attend the early levy briefing, come to our office as soon as you get those orders. Do not wait, do not wait, because um, the longer you wait, um, we cannot guarantee that you're gonna get those dates that you requested. And then just, um, you could face changing your dates, which means, you know, you gotta change your plans as well. So come to our office and plan. Um, I would not recommend planning any uh, leave and so forth until you have set, communicate with the TSPs that those dates are confirmed. Um, that way, in case you have to shift, you're not shifting your plans that you've already spent money for on those leave family trips and so forth before you go to your next duty station. Okay. And, uh, and just some, some from the housing office side, what are some do's and don'ts, things that you see that, that soldiers need to know about? Them, them yes, sir, and I agree with Marie on this part of where planning. Um, a lot of times when the soldiers come in, they've already signed their lease, and we really prefer to for everyone to see us prior to signing their lease because once they've signed their lease, that's an agreement they've made with either the housing partner or their local housing agency. Eric, can you tell us a little bit more about the BAH program and how it's monitored and maintained? Yes, sir. So our BAH program is um, it's regionally based and it's performed annually. So we here at Fort Knox, we've in the last two years, we've really uh, taken a, a a hard look on how the list of homes that the contractor provides us. So they provide us a list of homes, high end, low ends, and we visually inspect the homes, the areas. There could be low end rates that may be cheaper for the soldier, but not as desirable. So we've been very fortunate and we're really proud of uh, the results we've had in the last two years where we've really um, taking a hard look at the homes they're listing for us or they want to count as part of the BH program, and we are able to eliminate them. So in doing that, we've, uh, we've been really successful the last two years where we've had increases above 5% back to back. And what that does is that allows our soldiers to live in something a little nicer and a little more affordable. Um, I'll start with you, Marie. Any last thoughts? Um, no, the only thing I would really say is please plan as far ahead as possible. Please don't hesitate and please ask those questions because um, we are there to guide you uh, to make this transition as smooth as possible. And the same for you, Eric. Yes, sir. We encourage people to please come and see us. Uh, we have a great program. We have a great team who really care what they do and we can provide mediation. It's not just PCS season. We, we want to help anytime you're living in the home. Uh, and I want to thank you both, Marie and Eric, for, uh, for joining us today. It's been very informative and thoughtful.